So today I am doing my first video in my deep dive into the 2024 presidential election series, and I'm starting on the Pacific Coast and the Northwest with the state of Washington. So getting right into it, the state of Washington is a state that at the presidential level typically votes for the Democratic candidate. Back in 2020, the last election prior to 2024, the Democratic candidate, Joe Biden, the former vice president at the time, won the state of Washington by 19.2 percentage points. In 2016, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton won the state with 15.7%. In 2012, President Barack Obama won the state with 14.9%. And in 2008, then-Senator Barack Obama won the state with 17.2%. Lastly, in 2004, John Kerry, who was running against President Bush at the time, won the state by 7.2%. So we can certainly see a trend here that ever since 2008, the state of Washington has been won by double digits and has pretty much always been won by 15 points or more. And in my personal ratings, I have any state decided by over 10 points considered to be a safe state or a solid state. And Washington certainly on the Democratic side fits into that category. Now, quickly, I'm going to look at the national vote of these presidential elections because I'm going to do a quick comparison in a second, looking at how Washington votes compared to how the nation votes. So, for example, in 2020, the nation as a whole, the national popular vote, voted for Joe Biden by 4.4% of the vote. And as I mentioned, in 2020, Joe Biden won the state of Washington by 19.2% of the vote. So that means when you look at how the nation voted, and how the margin of Washington voted, then you're going to get what the uh, Washington vote versus national vote was. So I'll be doing that in a second, but first I'm just going to run down these numbers, what they were. 2020, the Democratic candidate Joe Biden won the nationwide vote by 4.4%. 2016, Hillary Clinton won the nationwide vote by 2.1%. 2012, Barack Obama won the nationwide vote by 3.9%. 2008, then-Senator Obama won it by 7.2%. In 2004, George Bush won it by 2.4. So in 2020, the state of Washington voted 14.8% to the left, to the Democratic side, of what the popular vote was. So 14.8% to the left of the country. In 2016, the state of Washington voted 13.6% to the left of the country for Hillary Clinton. In 2012, President Obama the state of Washington voted 11 points to the left of the national popular vote and how the country voted. In 2008, then-Senator Obama won the state of Washington by 10 points to the left of the popular vote. 2004, John Kerry won the state of Washington to, by 9.6% to the left of the popular vote. I wanted to throw this chart in here because I thought this is very interesting in that there's a clear trend here that it seems to be increasing by 1 to 2 percentage points each election, where Washington continues to vote more and more to the left of the popular vote. You see from 9.6 to 10 and 04 to 08, that's up 0.4. 8 to 12 was up 1 point. 12 to 16 was about 2.6 points. And 16 to 20 was about 1.2 points. So the numbers are varying a little bit, but the common consistency is that it is going up. The question will be, is there any more room in the state of Washington to continue to go up? I think it's possible that the Democratic candidates may be reaching their ceiling with how high the support they have there, seeing as 2020 had some of the highest voter turnout in any presidential election. And without the widespread mail-in ballots in the way the election was conducted, that 2024 will be compared to 2020, it's not a given that percentage of the country voter turnout will be higher. It's certainly possible that it will be. I'm not making a definitive claim that voter turnout won't be as high or may even be higher. We're not going to know really until election day. Certainly there's been a lot of voter enthusiasm, but it remains to be seen how high it will be and whether or not Washington will continue that trend of going further to the Democratic side of the popular vote. But that'll be something to watch for on election day. In Washington, 2024, in the presidential forecasts, right now, Real Clear Politics and their polling website, they have the state of Washington listed as solid Democrat. On the Sabato Crystal Ball, the Center for Virginia Politics, or Center for Politics, excuse me, uh, they have Washington listed as safety. Safety, solid D is basically the same thing. 
538, the polling website, pollster firm, they have a solid D characterization as well for Washington. Nate Silver's bulletin website has a solid D as well. And the decision desk, uh, decision desk DDHQ has it as safety as well. And just to back up some of these numbers, I'm using real core politics uh, polling. They don't have the average done yet uh, for the state of Washington, but aside from one poll from a pollster I've never even heard of before, to be completely honest, Harris was up by 15 back in July, 21 by uh, Cascade PBS and LA in September. There really is not much of an argument here that Washington will be a solid state. I firmly believe that. But also, I'm just going to now go on to the state of Washington itself because this video is about Washington. Those are some of the numbers. I wanted to pick out a few counties in the state of Washington that I particularly on election day am going to be watching for. The first county, county is, I believe it's pronounced, and again, if you're from the state, please correct me if I'm wrong, Calayam County. In this county, in 2012, President Obama won the county by 0.4%. In 2016, Donald Trump won the county by 2.8%. And then in 2020, Hillary Clinton, or Joe Biden, excuse me, won the county by 3.4%. So it's interesting that the county trended from 16 to, uh, 2012 to 16, it trended red. And 16 to 20, it trended blue again. The question that a lot of people have been asking in 2024 is what kind of election will it be? A lot of the polls right now on the national vote show that Kamala Harris is leading Donald Trump nationally by about two points. And if that's true, we're looking at key counties to see, well, will she be doing as well in some of these um, toss-up counties or leaning counties as well as Biden did in 2020? For instance, in a county like this one, if Trump is winning this county or losing this county by like less than a point, I think that's a sign that Trump is overall performing a little bit better in a lot of suburban areas than how he did in 2020. And just to show you where Clayham County is, I'm just going to show you real quick. I'm going to go to the state of Washington. And Clayham County is right here. It's this county up here. It's this one right here. It's a smaller suburban county just outside of Seattle. 3.4% of the vote. Look in 2016, as I showed you, 2.8% of the vote right here. 2012, Obama won it by 0.38%. And if you look back at 2008, the county was 3.3 for Obama over McCain. So the trend up until 2020 was it was moving more and more to the Republican side, and Biden was able to win it back in 2020. I'm interested to see if this trend continues or Trump flips it and keeps it going Republican and reverses the trend that Biden made in 2020. So that is certainly one that I'm watching for. There's also another county in Washington called Clark County. Which, it's funny, if you're interested in following elections as I am, you'll know one of the most talked uh, counties that are talked about in Nevada, where Las Vegas is, is called Clark County. So when I was going through the map for Washington, I found this county, and it was also called Clark County. I was like, oh, that's interesting. So Clark County in Washington, in 2012, it was won by Obama by 0.2. In 2016, it was won by Clinton by 0.2. But it was won in 2020 by Biden by 5.1. And this is one I found very, very interesting because kind of in the first one where Biden did very well in a lot of suburban areas in 2020, much better than Hillary Clinton did, and even in some cases better than Barack Obama did, I'm interested in seeing does Trump be able, even though this is a democratic state, is Trump able to like mix some of these margins back up and get that 5.1%, maybe back down to like one or two or under one, something like that is what I'm looking for. And I want to see if that happens, so I thought this county was an interesting one to look at. And now I'm just going to try and find Clark County for you right down here. 5.1% of the vote, as I mentioned, in 2020. 2016, 0.16, extremely close in 2016. 2012, 0.23, very, very close. As you can tell, I rounded up the numbers just to make all things even. But... That's definitely a very close one to watch that I really thought would be interesting to see. Maybe if there's a sign that Harris or Trump is doing very well on election night, a county like this, it'll be 11 p.m., so we might have an idea by then, but it'll be an interesting one to keep an eye out for. So that is Clark County, and now I'm going to go to Pacific County. This one is really interesting to me because of how much it swung from 2012 to 2016. In 2016, there were a lot of counties that voted for Barack Obama in 2012 that a lot of people were surprised to see flip Republicans so drastically. And Pacific County in Washington was one of those, where Barack Obama won it by 11.5%. And again, that's over the 10% rating. So in my own personal ratings, it goes from being a solid county 
to 6.9% for the Republicans, which would be a likely county for me. So it goes from 11.5 to 6.9. That's what, about, let's see, quick math here, that's 11.5 points down, plus about 7. That is about an 18.5% swing from 2012 to 2016 in that one county. And then in 2020, the county was won by Trump, but only by 1.1 points. So that almost goes down 6% or over 6% of the vote in just four years. So this county certainly loves to like do sporadic swings in how it votes. So I'm interested to watch this one because I think it'll be very interesting to see how this one goes. If this goes back up to like seven or eight points, this could be a sign that Trump is having a very good night. If it swings to closer to Obama numbers in 2012, then that is certainly a sign that Harris is probably outperforming their current polls, even though it's Democratic state and should be having potentially a very good night. So that's what I want to keep an eye out for. And Pacific County, I'm going to look for it right now, is right here. As I mentioned, 1.1 in 2020, 2016 right here, 6.9, and 2012 right here, 11.5. So that's a very, very interesting one that I'm going to watch for in election night because I think it's very, very interesting. So that's Pacific. Now we're looking at Mason County where it voted for Obama by 7.5% in 2012, Trump by 6 points in 2016, and Trump by 3.9% in 2020. Again, it's kind of a similar pattern. Since was, uh, Washington is such a very heavily Democratic state, there really isn't too many bellwether counties that will flip the state red to blue like a Pennsylvania would. So you're really trying to like cherry pick uh, what counties are potentially going to be like competitive and close to watch. So I'm going for the ones that I noticed a lot of vote change from 12 to 16 to 20. And Mason is very similar to Pacific County where it voted for Obama by 7.5, Trump by 6 in 2016, and then 3.9 for Trump in 2020. I'm curious to see, does Trump improve the 3.9% or does the 3.9% go down? That could be a sign of more suburban trouble for Trump or it could be the uh, flip side of him potentially doing better. So that's one I want to keep an eye out for and see how that goes. Mason County, I believe, I'm trying to find it real quick. Where is Mason? There it is. There's Mason County. I do uh, apologize. Washington's not one of the states I'm most familiar with, so a lot of this I'm kind of learning uh, either for the first time or not for a while. So this is one of the first states I'm doing in the video for a reason. I don't know too much about it, so I'm trying to learn on the fly. But Ma uh, Mason, Washington, about 3.9% win for Trump in 2020, 50 to 46 about. Now we look at 2016. Trump won the county 48-42, so a plurality of the vote there. Lots of third-party support. And then in 2012, Obama won the county 52 to 45. I'm very interested to see how this county goes and if this trend continues. And the last county I'm looking at is the county of Whitman County. This is one example of a county that actually voted for Mitt Romney in 2012 by 2.7%. In 2016, Trump lost the county by 4.3, and Biden won the county in 2020 by 10 points. I'm more curious in this one, does it continue to trend blue? And if it does, by how much? Because I think if this is a county that's D plus 10 and say it's like D plus, if it's what, a six point gain, if it's a D plus 16 or D plus 15, that could be indicative that maybe Harris is outperforming in this state and might be outperforming nationwide. So that's one I want to keep an eye out for, just because I thought it'd be interesting to watch. And Whitman County is right here on the eastern uh, border with Montana and Idaho, I believe. I think this part is Idaho, excuse me. And it's right here. Or Idaho or Wyoming? It might be... I think it's Idaho, but you can, double, you can double check me on that. I think it's Idaho. Whitman right here, 10 points in 2020, 4.3 in 2016, and Whitman 2.7 for Romney in 2012. That's one I think will be interesting to watch for. So those are just some key counties I want to go over. Now I'm going to get into the party aspects themselves. In 2020 for president, Joe Biden got 58% of the vote. 2016... Hillary Clinton won the state with 52.5% of the vote. And in 2012, President Barack Obama won the state with 56.2% of the vote. So when I conducted the range uh, of these three elections for this state, and I what I did was I took the range, the difference of the 58 and the 52.5, and I subtracted it from the lowest number, which would be the 52.5 from 2016, and I added it from the highest number, which is the 58 in 2020. That gives an estimated Democratic vote range in the state of Washington come Election Day, somewhere between 47% of the vote to 63.5%. And barring some sort of drastic, like, hard-to-explain polling miss 
and the state of Washington, there's a pretty good chance that the state of Washington will have a Democrat, will have Kamala Harris, the Democratic vice president, getting somewhere between 47% and 63.5%. That's obviously a huge spread, but I'm like 95% sure the vote will fall somewhere between that total. And in my own personal prediction, this is where, again, it's a prediction, so I'm, of course, going to be prone to be wrong, but I'm going with my best guess and best estimate that I have. I think Washington, Kamala Harris is going to slightly underperform Biden, but not by much. I think she's going to get about 57.3%, so more towards the higher side of the range than the lower side. It's a very Democratic state. I mean, there's actually, for as uh, solid states go, it's pretty consistent with how it votes. I think it's more likely than not that Harris will probably do well in Washington, and I think she'll be more on the higher side towards Biden's tolls in 2020 in this state. On the Republican side, in 2020, Donald Trump got 38.8%. 2016, he got 36.8%. And in 2012, Mitt Romney got 41.3%. So again, I conducted the same thing. I took the highest total, which was Romney's 41.3, subtracted it from the lowest total, which was Trump's 2016, 36.8. And I did the ranging again, 36.8 minus the difference, 41.3 plus the difference. That gets estimated vote range of 36.3 to 43.8. Somewhere in that range is most likely going to be the vote on election day. My prediction for it, I have Trump getting about 39.6%, slightly outperforming his margin from 2020, but nothing really drastic, maybe a few points here and there in some suburban counties. But I feel pretty confident that he'll do a little bit better, but not much better in the state of Washington. I think it's certainly going to still be a big Democratic win. So just to put that into graphics and what it shows on election night, I expect the state of Washington. On election night, I expect the state of Washington to go for Vice President Kamala Harris. I have her getting fifty-seven point three percent of the vote. Donald Trump getting thirty-nine point six percent of the vote, which means Kamala Harris will win the state of Donald of Washington over Donald Trump by seventeen point seven percent of the vote. Is how I think she'll win it by. And when you compare that to the past election results, that puts her pretty much smack dab in the middle in between 2020 and 2016's election results in the state and pretty much on par with what Barack Obama did in the state in 2008. So that's where I have the state of Washington going. And I also just want to finish with the electoral map. I'm going to be doing on every video I do for every state breakdown. I'm going to clo uh, I'm going to fill in these states leading up all the way through election day. And the way I'm scheduling it out right now, I'm planning to do one to two of these videos every day. So it should be, the map should be completed one or two days before election day. So it should lead right into election day perfectly. But right now, the state of Washington goes for Kamala Harris. It starts out with a 12 to nothing electoral vote lead for Harris. And my next video I'll be doing, if you're interested, will be the state of Oregon on the presidential map. So please stay tuned for that. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first one, as I mentioned, in the series. There are 49 states to go, so I hope you please stay tuned for that. It is officially now 11 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have poll closings in four very important Pacific Coast states, including the states of California, Idaho, Oregon, and the state of Washington. All of these states, we have a pretty good idea of how they are going to vote, so let's not waste any time. Let's jump in and make some very important projections. The state of Washington, Vice President Harris, is also the winner of its 12 electoral votes. That will do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a like. And if you really liked it, please remember to click the subscribe button. And make sure you turn post notifications on so you always get notified when I post a new video. That way you never miss one. Also, please remember to share this video with your friends and family if you really, really, really like the video. And remember to stay tuned because I'll be posting at least one video every single day leading up until Election Day. So I'd really appreciate it if you keep coming back and watching those videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.